Hello, you're very welcome to Geography Talks with me, Tom O'Call. This episode is part of our podcast series where we discuss the issues of the day in all things geography, as well as helping students prepare for their geography exams. In today's podcast, we will be discussing the earthquake that struck Haiti on August 14th and take a little closer look at the history of earthquakes in the region. As always, if you want to send in any questions or queries, you can email me at geographytalksireland at gmail.com. We'll get to them at the end of the next episode. Now, if you studied geography at any point in the last 10 years, then you will know about the earthquake that hit Haiti on January 12th in 2010. It was one of the worst to hit the region with an estimated, estimated one quarter of a million people losing their lives and at least 300,000 others were injured. On that occasion, the earthquake registered a magnitude of seven on the Richter scale. But what made it so powerful was that it was a shallow earthquake, meaning its focus was close to the Earth's surface. And in Haiti's case, it was just 10 kilometers below the surface. That really exacerbated the damage caused. Uh, but, but really, the last 10 years, Haiti has been one of the worst areas in the world affected by natural disasters. After that earthquake in 2010, Haiti was ravaged by Hurricane uh, Isaac and Hurricane Sandy in 2012. And at that time, 400,000 Haitians still lived in tents from the uh, earthquake that had happened two years previously. Then, just three short years later, and over one million people in the country were affected by drought, which was caused by El Nino, which is a weather phenomenon, which brings long periods of dry weather to the region. In that year, 2015, harvest yields were just 30% of what was to be expected. And this led to food shortages in the country. And if that wasn't bad enough, a few months later, in October 2016, Hurricane Matthew, a very violent Category 4 hurricane, caused mass destruction and displacement in Haiti, uh, with another 546 people losing their lives. Uh, but we fast forward then to August 2021, and on August 14th, Haiti was ravaged by a 7.2 magnitude earthquake. Uh, and at the time of recording this, sadly, 227 people have died. Uh, so there was a very quick summary of the last 10 years of natural disasters in Haiti. We're going to focus on earthquakes for this podcast. And as you will know, earthquakes occur at plate boundaries. And this is where two tectonic plates meet. An earthquake is, I suppose, in its most basic form, a sudden release of energy from below the Earth's surface. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Earth's surface itself is broken up into large sections called tectonic plates. And these plates are constantly moving. Ireland, for example, is on the Eurasian plate. And that uh, basically encompasses Ireland, the UK, all of mainland Europe, Scandinavia, and Asia. Now, if you look at a map of Earth's tectonic plates, you will see that Haiti sits on the Caribbean plate or the Caribbean plate, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is a minor plate that, for the most part, sits below the Caribbean Ocean, as well as Haiti and the Dominican Republic. But, <laughs> and this is where it gets very unfortunate for Haiti, there is a surprise tucked in there. Right between the Caribbean and North American plates, there is the Ganave microplate. The Ganav microplate is a long, narrow plate that forms part of the boundary between the two larger plates. And running along its southern edge, so at the southern edge of the Ganav plate, is a strike-slip fault line, or as it would be more commonly known, a transform fault, which, as you may have guessed, runs straight through Haiti. And more significant than that, it runs straight through the main urban areas of Haiti. Uh, now, a transform fault is basically one where the two plates are sliding past each other. But what happens is from time to time, they'll get stuck. And all of this pressure builds up. And one day, they decide to just slip. And this causes the huge sudden release of energy. Now, if you're following the news, then you'll see that the damage caused by this earthquake, while still very significant, uh, it's a lot less than the one that was caused in 2010. And what I suppose we want to try and understand is, what is it that makes those two earthquakes different? And why is it we are unlikely to see the same levels of catastrophe as we did in 2010? The main reason is where along the fault line the earthquake started. So if you imagine the Caribbean Ocean, it's, it's quite a wide ocean. You then put in Haiti and the Dominican Republic, and you get what is effectively a very long fault line. And 
what had happened is in 2010, the focus, which uh, is where the earthquake occurs underground, that was located to the east of the fault line, which was pretty much underground of Haiti, which um, is, um, I'm, I'm trying to maybe describe it for you, which is not, not that easy without a map. But if you look at the map of Haiti, it was pretty much directly under one of its main cities. But the most recent earthquake, the one in 2021, the focus seems to be located towards the west of the fault. Now, obviously, it's still early days and we're waiting for all the information to be confirmed. But from what we have seen so far, it looks like the focus for this was further away to the west, which is out to sea and by, by default then is further away from the urban areas. Um, now, there was a tidal wave warning early on in the stages of this earthquake happening, but that's since been lifted. Um, location is very significant in earthquakes because after an earthquake, we have an aftershock, and oftentimes you'll have several of them. And they happen for a number of days after the original earthquake. In 2010, those aftershocks caused a lot more damage but it also prevented access to the region by rescue workers, medical workers, um, medical aid coming in from abroad. And do you remember, as we said, because it started in the east of the fault line under, the, under, the, under Haiti, under its main cities, those aftershocks caused tremendous damage. But it's expected this time that the aftershocks will be less impactful. Um, and again, that is because the earthquake's focus is further out to the west, further out to sea. And so we do hope that there will be less impact, but we will have to wait and see. Um, but we do hope that indeed we won't see any further damage to the region. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning that there is a lot more to the outcome of an earthquake than just the magnitude. The location, as we said, of the focus is important, but also the economic state of the country and the region's preparedness are all key factors. Now, I think we've got it by now. Haiti is a poor country, so buildings are not earthquake resistant. And that makes them more prone to collapsing, which in turn increases the likelihood of serious injury and death of people. The poor construction of buildings in 2010 contributed to the fatalities from that earthquake. Now, in the richer countries, you'll find earthquake proof buildings, particularly in places like Japan and San Francisco, which are also on fault lines and would experience regular earthquakes. The, the buildings would include shock absorbers as well as um, flexible foundations. But of course, they do cost a lot of money. But the richer countries can afford this. And naturally, they consider it a worthwhile investment to save lives in the long term. But countries like Haiti just can't afford the same levels of engineering. And unfortunately, when disaster hit, it really hits hard. Another thing to consider here is prediction or preparedness. Seismologists regularly carry out surveys and observations using their seismographs so that they can predict when and where earthquakes will occur or certainly where they're likely to occur. Um, in the build-up to an earthquake, you're going to see small tremors. They're going to be picked up by the seismographs and they help to alert the region to an impending disaster or impending earthquake and allows them to evacuate or to prepare, depending, of course, how, how prepared they are in general. So I think the question we've got to ask is, why did this not happen in Haiti this time around? And what seems to be emerging, and we go back to the difference in location between this earthquake and the one in 2010. Uh, remember I said in 2010, the focus was to the east of the fault line, and this one was to the west. Well, it seems that seismologists were tracking activity in the eastern part of the fault line, and that this one, because it happened in the West, caught people off guard. Um, I suppose then at this point in time, we're, we're seeing the humanitarian relief making its way into Haiti. Uh, we're certainly hopeful that the worst is over. Um, but there are, if there are any developments, you know, I will be sure to get them to you. I suppose that is the <laughs> seismological DNA of Haiti summed up in, in, in as best as I can. Uh, and I think I'm going to leave it there for this podcast for now. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope of all else you found it to be interesting and educational. If you have any questions on what I've said, if you want me to clarify anything else, just send them to me, geographytalksireland at gmail.com. But until next time, slán.
Og det skal du meget godt.